It's Christmas! Hello! <laughs> Calendar number three, Advent number three. Did you all love the clasp? I think it's amazing, it's stunning. You know, like I said earlier in the show, I love the, that, that heart shape, that asymmetric heart, but to have it as a trigger clasp, that's, it, it, it's crazy, crazy. Um, talk about value for money in, in, in your day, wow. Um, so, we're going to be doing some chain mail with it because I looked at it and I thought, oh, I'd love to do some chain mail with this. And we're going to do, so the two um, techniques we're going to learn today is going to be Byzantine and um, the Mobius ring, which is one of the most basic um, things you start, but I've combined them together. So we've got, um, if I take you around here, we've got two, okay. Um, <laughs> we're on, it's, it's, it's like Byzantine doubled. So there's actually two strands of Byzantine and then they connect to the Mobius ring um, and go round. So, so you're getting this. So, so there's absolute great scope for adding to. Um, you could put a gemstone in the middle of there. You could replace the Mobius ring with a gemstone. There's great places you can put um, charms. We had some lovely charms earlier. You could put a charm down between. Um, you know, you, you can mix and match this once you, once you know how to do it. But I mean, that's just got to be at the front, hasn't it? It's absolutely delightful. So I've got my big jump rings all ready to go and we'll, we'll kick off. Byzantine, I love this weave. I absolutely love it. Um, it's named for the Byzantine people, an ancient, an ancient um, people. Um, and basically, chainmail comes from chainmail. So it's a, it's a form of armour, it's a protection. Um, and then in later years, people went, oh, that looks pretty. Let's start using it in fashion. So, so when when fashion became more important than saving your life, then chainmail as a jewellery um, medium started to come to life. And there are thousands of variations of chainmail. There are different groups you can have. You know, the Byzantine, the Persians. There's there's Oriental. There's European, and and then. Uh, there's Celtic and then it's exploded and people have taken elements and used them to make other things so so it's great I love it so what I wanted to do was show you how I've used it slightly differently than just a normal Byzantine bracelet um, and stepped it up to give you something a bit different but I hope you'll take the basics and then run with them and, and do, do what what works for you with them so Byzantine each little Byzantine element, so if I pull this up here, this is your basic, whoops, don't spring up on me. This is your basic Byzantine element. Um, and then you use these as building blocks. So they can, they can connect directly to each other. So they'd look like this. Obviously, this is a different gauge. So you, so you could have this. This is a brass um, bracelet. Um, and this is you'll hear when you start doing chain mail, you'll hear about aspect ratio. So it's the inner diameter. Usually when we talk about jump rings, we talk about the inner diameter rather than the outer diameter. It's the inner diameter plus the gauge of wire. So effectively, it's how many, how many jump rings of that gauge can you get into one jump ring? So you've got sort of how many can you, can you attach in? So it's, it, this is what your aspect ratio is for. Some, uh, some, chainmail styles, it's relevant, some it's not. So Byzantine, it's very relevant because there is only so many. This is a heavier gauge that you can fit in there. This is a much lighter gauge, let me, as you can see, so there's a lot more space in it. Now, if you don't hold that out, that will collapse a little bit. It will shake back into place um, because that's a much finer jump ring so the aspect ratio is different to this one, which is, which is um, I think this is a 1.25 gauge um, jump ring. I can't, I think there are seven mil in a diameter. So, so that's how many, you know, and then you divide them to get how many jump rings you can. Now I think, my memory's going now, it's 3.5 aspect ratio to five and a half but don't quote me on that. But just try it and see. If you're not sure, basically try it and see. And if you can't get enough jump rings in, 
then you can't do it. I think people get hung up on the aspect ratio and it becomes a science, which is great if that's what you want to do. If you don't want to go down that route, then all you have to do is try a weave. You lose nothing but a bit of time. That's it. So just don't, don't, don't get stressed by it and think, oh, now do I divide that by that and how many and, and can I use that? I don't worry about it. I try it and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't. I'll find some other way. So I'm gonna put that one to one side. This will come in later. So how do we create these little Byzantine elements? We start off, we're gonna have two closed jump rings. Now I've opened them all. Okay, and then we're going to add two more. So we're gonna put two. Now normally you would use your um, pliers for this because these are so big, just to demo with, I'm not using my pliers. So we've got two by two. Okay, now one good thing you want to get into the habit of doing, sorry, which I, I put a piece down there and I've thrown it in the bin and I've just stuck my finger in, in some water. Um, just bear with me, I just get a piece of wire. There we go. Is, is have a piece of wire. It's handy because you can start, when you, when you start doing it, basically what, what you're doing with this is you're giving yourself something to hold on to. As you know, most, most um, forms of jewellery making, be they sea bead, wire work, uh, shibori, I don't, I don't care what you're doing, threading, threading slightly easier, but the start of it is, is usually fiddly. That's the start. So all I'm gonna do is pop a piece of wire into my two jump rings and just give it a twist. I can now hold on to that just to give myself some, rather than trying to hold those, manipulate those, pull that through, so that's, that's the start of it. So we're now going to open up these two jump rings. Just let them fall back like a floppy, a floppy eared dog. So you've got your ears on each side. We're then going to open up the middle two and pull these through, okay? Now, these pull through. You can see this is the aspect ratio thing I was talking about. So these obviously are very fine. I'm gonna try and hold it like that so you can see. These are very, very fine compared to a huge hole. But if I had to try and have jump rings that thick um, so you could see them easily, I'd never, be able to, I'd never be able to open them. So I'm gonna take the next color and we're going to catch these which we've poked through the middle. And you see how you get this, this shape. And I'm going to put one and two in there. So if it does do that, because these are narrow, just pull that one and it pops back into space straight away. So we're going to pop that one in there. Just a minute. Okay, so that's half of our Byzantine. Okay, so now we're going to do the other half, which is that in reverse. So we're going to add on, I'll do them in silver this time. We're going to add on one, Two. I'm not going to worry about what the first one does because I know it's going to pop back in. So we've got the first two. That's what we had there. Then we're going to have our next two, which are our ears, our floppy dog's ears going on. That's what we're going to have there. So we're going to let our floppy dog's ears fall to either side, open up the middle two and push the ears, push the... Um, the first two up through and then we're going to catch those on as soon most most of the um byzantine you don't have to do that for it to pop back into play into shape the reason mine's falling is because they're they're too narrow to hold in position so if i if i pop that down there so if you put a heavy gemstone on there that's not going to go anywhere. That will hold in position and it will, it will keep that shape. But as soon as you sort of, it all collapses, but you can do that, pull your wires back through and it'll pop back into shape. So, so you can do it. You could also encase a gemstone in there and there to hold it into place, but that's a different story. But if you can see with this one, you know, it doesn't matter what I do with this, it's not going to break its shape. And that's because it's much tighter. You look at the space you've got around each of those chains compared to the space, each, each of those jump rings compared to the space you've got around each of these. Whoops, pull those through. There we go. And pop back in. 
So that bit there is that bit there. That, that copper one there is that bit in the middle. So that it's just easier to show you on a larger scale jump ring where we're going. So that's our chainmail Byzantine basic. Okay, so I'm going to pop that to one side. And we're now going to, we're now going to um, do the uh, Mobius ring. So this is, this is the, I'm going to pull this over here again. So this is this bit. We've done this bit. We now want to do this bit. Mobius rings are great. They're, they're lovely. You can, do, you can do one to many. You, you don't have to, you need a minimum of three. So it was um, traditionally used in jewellery. I don't know whether it was first used, but it was traditionally used in jewellery for the three different colours of metal and inter intertwine the rings. That's where a lot of it came to popular um, sight from. So to do, to do this, we're going to close one jump ring and we're going to do it with three. So we're going to pick up our next one, it's open. Now I open mine away from me. Always open your jump rings in the same way. Um, it doesn't always have to be one way or another. My husband opens them towards him, he twists it towards him, but I always open that way. It will mean your Mobius rings are consistent. So you're popping it through the big jump ring and closing it. Come on. Okay, so they then sit. You see how they, they, they're open like that and they just slide in and nestle. Okay, then you're going to put another one in and I'm going to grab a silver one so you can see the difference. So I'm going through the centre again of both of them and then I'm going to close it. Now when you push that up, do you see how it forms that beautiful ring? It looks stunning with the three colours, it looks great with, with one colour. If you get it, you'll know if it doesn't look right because it starts doing funny things like that. All that means is one of them's the wrong way and you'll be able to just flip it over. So if you, if you have put it in the other way, don't worry about it, you can just flip it and then it will sit and nestle in together perfectly. Okay, so if we go back to our Byzantine now, what we need to do is connect the, the end of the Byzantine to our Mobius ring. So I'm going to take one of those and take one of those and pop it through there. So we're now starting to build up our um, bracelet. Like I say, you could do it as a necklace, as a bracelet. So we're going to connect those. Now, um, I posted on my Facebook page how many you'll need of four mil in a diameter to make a six inch bracelet. There's four mil and five mil in a diameter jump rings. Um, I've used two different sizes. And then how many you need for the, um, for the bracelet. So for this one, I've got six sets. So when I, when I say that, so this one is slightly different color to the silver. This is, this is a smaller gauge, but it, it still works. So they're a bit looser than this one. You can see this one. These are one mil, these are 0.8. Um, these are your five mil and these are your four mil. So I've swapped them around. Your five mil are the connectors and your four mil are the ins. Just to give you, it, it will look a bit different and it just gives you some more ideas of having variety. Um, you can mix your metals, you can do these. What would be really nice is if you do the uh, Byzantine in maybe gold and silver and then the Mobius rings in, um, in, in your rose gold. So you can play with it, you can play with colour. You, if you've got coloured jump rings, brilliant. Have a, have a play. Um, and the silver, the sterling silver charm is going to go with all of them. Uh, charm, it is like a charm, isn't it? It's a clasp. Um, so once you've got your chain and you're just connecting all your individual pieces to your Mobius rings in one, one long line. But I can hear you saying, well, hang on a minute, we need a double one. So I've now created six more of our chain mail pieces. Okay, so we've got six more of our pieces and we're going to connect them into the Mobius rings. So I've already put the connection ring on there. So we're going to pick them up, open up our jump ring. And I'm going to start with the end one. So we're finishing, we've got our little Mobius on the end. Make sure they're all lying the straight way, the same way. 
make sure that you've actually got your Byzantine. Come here. I'm going to use my other pliers because I'm so used to using these. I'm sorry they don't look as pretty. So we're going to pop that in there. And then we're going to pop that. And it doesn't matter which way up, just so long as those three of your Mobius ring all work together. So I'm going to pop that in there. You can see your Mobius ring sitting nice. Close your jump ring up. Now I'm going to pull the Mobius over there. So now you can see how we're, we're tying this together. Yeah, I'm going to use one of these just for now. There we go. You know, I said about having something at the end. Now, it, now it's easier to hold. So now you can see how this is going to build up. So we're going to add in each of these. So I've already got that connected. Make sure they're sitting the right way. When I say that, you know, just don't twist it around. So if you want to lay it flat, you can. Pick up your jump ring. You'll be doing this in one go, so you won't have yours separately um, sectioned. Now, I find that the biggest problem I have with our jump rings is actually finding where that connection is. So I'm going to take these over and I'm going to pop that into that Mobius ring. And I'm going to use my pliers to just shut that. So when you're shutting a jump ring, let me just go back. So you can see now we've got um, our thing building. When you're shutting a jump ring, and I'll do it with the pliers so my fingers aren't in the way, you want them to be flush like that. You don't want them to be open because jump rings could drop through. You don't want them to cross over. You want them to be... So you're almost crossing them over and then snicking past it and you'll hear a lovely little snick oh mandy hello the bracelet is stunning i used to i use twist ties to hold my chain mail perfect that's a great idea um, and what's another good idea so we used to sell um oh uh, what's the big board no the the big wooden one the knotty do it all have little little pegs that you can use to hold to hold your chain mail. So if if we've got that there, you could put that in your knotty do it all, hang it there, and you're not having to pick it up and down. So that's a great idea. Thanks for that, Mandy. I love it. Um, so we're then going to put up uh, a next one. And I've uh, so this is all my my trouble is finding the one that works. So I'm going to pop that into there and close it. So there is, there's obviously a little bit of repetition involved. Bring that down. There we go. So we're going to have that one. It's coming up that way. Um, if you've got uh, helping hands or anything like that as well, that can, that can do it. Um, you can pin them to a macrame board. Um, just to hold it in place so while you're doing it they're sitting in place and this is going to look i mean it, it, it's going to look very different to let me just undo this clasp there we go so it looks quite different see how much heavier um it is just because you've got a different gauge but they both look beautiful so so you might want this one I don't know, I'd say that's more eveningy. This is a little bit heavier, so I'd probably use it for daytime. So, but it doesn't matter. It's whatever, whatever you fancy. You can make this as heavy or as light as you want. So popping that one out of the way, we're just going to fasten these last four um, pieces. There we go. Um, we've usually got um, jump rings um, available on the website, so check out. Oh, oh my gosh, we've got a hundred. That's sterling silver. <gasps> this is this is live, unfortunately, so I can't just pop over and buy some of those because that's amazing. Um, I I popped uh how many i use i think on the facebook page um and i can't remember um 
could you have a look by any chance for me? Um, because I did, I left the piece of paper at home with it on. Um, and that'll tell you how many you use. That's an amazing price. So you could do a sterling silver um, bracelet like this. And if you want to, if you want to make your jump rings go further, then all you have to do is, is add in some um, gemstones. So instead of maybe doing the Mobius rings, you could put a gemstone in there instead. So long as you've got a loop either side and just adjust the number of these sets you need to make your bracelet. So um, that's an amazing price for those jump rings. There we go. So it's, what size are these? So these are four million in diameters, are they for 24? Oh. Oh, three mil in there. Okay. Three and five mil. So your five mil, um, you'll need slightly less. I would use the five mil with the three mils as your Mobius rings and your connectors, and they'd look amazing. A whole, a whole sterling silver one is going to look incredible. Um, remember, because that's, that's going to be, I think, I think that's going to be nine or ten grams of silver, or nine, certainly quite a, nine and, nine and a half grams if you use all those jump rings. Um, and that's that's going to need if you're going to sell it then you will need to hallmark it oh the bundles three four and five oh amazing so you could actually taper it as well that's incredible i love that 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 is an ing could you imagine the price i would i would have said now i'm i'm not known i haven't i haven't sold for a long time and even when I did sell, I'm not known for my um, good prices. <laughs> I used to be terrible at pricing. I've got better now because, because I created the spreadsheet. Um, so I have learned a lot. Um, but even I wouldn't sell one of these bracelets in sterling silver for $24.99. That, that you, you're looking at 75 to 100 I would have thought at least. Uh, at least. Um, the, you know, the work involved, there's, it's, not a, it's not a long... Um, process to do it's not it's not going to take you forever it's you can do it in an evening you can do it um you know it's a nice uh afternoon project right so we've connected those together so we're nearly finished and and you know that's that's the start of it so all we want to do now um and i'm going to use the clasp can i use the one from in here number three pop it out there we go this clasp's incredible. I love it. Yeah, there it is. You know, again, you can use any clasp with this. Um, we had, um, can we put the jadeite heart from earlier on? Have we got any left or is it sold out? Oh, it's gone quiet. That's thrown them, that's thrown them. So I'm going to put this onto now think about where you're going so my my jump ring is coming straight up come here so you can see it there you go my jump ring is coming straight up perfect the hole is horizontal so this is vertical that's horizontal they'll that will go in perfectly there and allow the heart to lie flat so you have to think when you're doing things like this you have to think where it's finishing and what what it's going to end up as so that's great for that side. That's what we want. We want it to be able to sit there and shine. So I'm going to bring the other side round and I've put this through the Mobius. So just let me, I tidied away really well. Oh, there they are. And I put my jump rings away. <laughs> that was silly, wasn't it? Come here, come on, open up. By the way, it, I usually find chainmail goes better if you talk to your jump rings while you're doing it. People look at me funny. So again, we've got our clasp, which is horizontal. We're going to, we've got our Mobius ring, which is horizontal. 
and we want that to go through there and through there so it's perfect if you want to do a bit of an extender chain then you would have to do a jump another jump ring and then another one so you'd pop that in there make sure you've got all three of your mobius rings which i haven't there we go you see that will sit under there great let me fasten that clasp to there. the clasp is amazing so that lies beautifully if you wanted to do an extender do every other so do a little jump ring holding those two together a little three mil and then add another bigger one then a three mil and then have a a gemstone or if you can have an extender chain if you've got some extender chain then use your extender chain so if i take that if i undo that and now bring these two down you can see the difference of the two of them together so you can see this one's obviously longer because it's got the bigger jump rings in the big emodius ring this one's much more dainty have a play with them there is nothing to say that you can't use the same um technique and i'll show you in a minute with these with these jump rings and make a chunky version so i'll quickly show you how to do the chunky version of that it's not i mean i wouldn't put this necessarily with that clasp though because this is obviously a lot heavier weight this is more suited to to um a smaller it would work it would work to be fair um you'd need an extra jump ring through there to get that through um but it would work with it it would hold it it's strong enough but it's it's a scale thing you know it, it's good to look overpowered by that chain mail especially if you, if i if i fetch this together if it's doubled up that's quite a lot of chain mail there so i'm just going to take a couple of these sections off so that you can see um what it would be like in a heavier gauge we're going to move those up there and this is what your chain mail would be like without your mobius ring okay so if you didn't put the mobius ring in if you wanted to just do one straight chain mail um i'll show you how to do that as well um, and you could you could just have a continuous one with your heart at the end i just liked it with the mobius um this this uh technique is brilliant you can use it for so many things i've got a nice bigger one there so my byzantine unit let's call it finishes there okay so then we start the next one in here i might not uh, i might struggle to undo that actually um and then you'd you just replace those into there so have a play because this is this is i don't i hate this, i hate taking things to, to, to pieces um but just 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 remember you can double it up um you'd have those two together and they would come round like that into a mobius they would work perfectly and go there we go that's a better there we go now we can see how it works so they would come round into your mobius and you're almost ending up with byzantine flowers now i noticed when i was doing this gold one um i said about making sure you don't twist when you put it on you'll get it slightly different and you can see here so these when you pull them out can you see how you've got your two jump rings facing up you can put more in if you want to give it more stability um if you've got thinner jump rings um than the one mil so you could you could put three in there and three in when you come to the side so those two are facing up those two are facing up that one's twisted can you see how one's got the circle and one's got it facing up so that just needed undoing and flipping over um so that they were both facing that way you don't have to you don't have to care um it doesn't really matter it depends what what you think about so so that's your byzantine i've called it iliana because it's um persian for um beautiful um and it's just it's just a beautiful bracelet to do now because as you can see that doesn't take a long time you can do that we've got a bonus demo for you so we're going to learn how to do um, one of my favourite, favourite, favourite weaves of all time is a double spiral. 
I absolutely adore this. I've made so many of these ropes. You can do them with fine um, chain. You can do them with a really heavy chain. So I'm going to show you how to do a double spiral, which is a stunning, stunning um, piece to do. This, this I would use for bracelets, for ropes. Um, the number of these I could have sold over the years um, has been phenomenal. I've had um, presenters, guest designers, all sorts um, asking for them. Um, and it's really, really lovely. So I'm just gonna undo some jump rings here. It's something that, um, again, you can do it singly or doubly. Um, and it's great. So we've got different colours. We're going to start off with um, our two attached. I like that, Mandy. I like the idea of using using the ties. I've always got I've always got bits of wire lying around me, so I never think of things like that. I just use I've got a scrap box which I use all the time. Um, so I've got my two jump rings. Oh, hi, Alison. Can jo closed jump rings be used in chainmail, please? Yes, they can. Absolutely, they can. So with not in this one with your with your Byzantine. Um, you can you can use jo closed jump rings but you can't use all closed jump rings you have to be able to open some um you've, you've you've got to be able to open some jump rings for it to work so various things um your um japanese very often you can use closed jump rings um in fact 99 percent of the time all your smaller jump rings you tend to have one big one and then you have little jump rings around. Your little jump rings tend to be closed. So, so you can, you can um, do loads of the Japanese ones. Um, for, for the Byzantine, you can use some, but I, what I would say is you need to be able to put them through. So if we go back to um, one of these, okay. You could use it when you're pulling those through obviously you've got to be able to thread through some of the jump rings so, uh, let me let me let's do that let's do that we've got two they're closed okay but they could be open let me close two jump rings it's a very good question i'm i'm so used to having um a lot of open i do mix them i do mix them so when we're starting i would say your middle pair of jump rings so I'm going to put two on that one and close it up so these middle pair I'm calling there's there's two sets of three and two connecting so this one goes through there and through there so they're our first pair connected to that those have to be opening these two can be closed because you don't need to get into them so we're going to pull up our next two have to be closed uh, open sorry so we're going to put those in and close them and put those in and close them okay then we're going to drop our ears and push up through now you see when i did them that time i dropped them all the way and pushed and, and, and as you push you're almost opening these it's like it's like the mouth of a duck um opening so you've got those these copper ones are our closed jump rings we're then going to pick those up with another pair of open jump rings. So your middle pair of your set of three. So one, two, three. This middle pair here are our closed jump rings. So you could use those. So if I put that down and fetch, uh, what's it going to be easier to see it in? I'll fetch this one because it's bigger. So these are, as you see, these are the flip down ones, which are these. So these two here that flip down can be your closed jump rings. The rest of them would have to be open. So if you wanted, if you've got some closed textured ones, those are where they're going to show. So you absolutely can use them in Byzantine. You can use them in a lot of weaves. Um, like I say, Japanese is very good for it. Um, Celtic, I think you can use closed ones in Celtic. 
um, but have a play so yes yeah, so you can use them in the byzantine but not all obviously you've got to be able to open them to connect them so we're going to go uh, I've, I've made this back into a, a byzantine haven't i i i love it i um like i say you can cage beads in your byzantine as well you can also do um triple so instead of putting two um two of your your jump rings in the middle you can put three or four of them um depending on your aspect ratio depending on how many you've got um it's 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 your choice once you've learned this technique you can start playing with it and it's great so we've got our initial two and then we're going to put two into those two that's the easy part now this this is one of the fiddi fiddliest um ones you can do double so we're going to put those down and you'll see we create an eye can you see this eye shaped in, in the middle that's where we want to put the next two now if you think of the mobius ring where i've said always put it in the same way open your jump rings the same way and then what happens is your spiral will be continue continuous if you swap them back into the other direction it will give you a different weave but it won't give you your spiral you won't see that nice spiral that you get in in bought chains so we're going to go into there between the four of them so we've gone into that eye we're going to come up pick up our, our um, jump ring and close it so we've still got this eye here can you see the eye shape we're going to put because we're doing this double we're going to take a second one and put it through there and close it okay so I'm turning them clockwise <laughs> to turn it to face myself to make sure if you turn it that way then it's going to be um, I think you're doing a, a, a JPL you're going to go that way now we've now got three lots we don't want to go through all of there we want to now come to these two so we're now going to put our chain no we don't we want to go through that one sorry we're doing this one very very tight so we're going to go through all six of them through there so we're going to go through that one it's very weird when you're doing it big hold that one out the way and you're going to go through there without catching that one there we go no nope, we haven't let me let me undo that one because i've put that one in the wrong place right we're going back to where i was so we've done our two in there we're now going to do these two so you're going through there and close it same one let that one drop out of the way through there and close it the tighter your gemstone uh, your jump rings are the harder that becomes so as you can see this is now going to start spiraling round so we're now going to drop the, the gold ones and we've got the silver and copper and we're going to put our next gold one through there all the time i'm putting them in the same direction and i'm twisting them in the same direction can you see how this spiral is now starting to form so we're going to go copper next because that's what i've got to hand into there and close it we're going to go copper into there and close it and twist so you can start to see that spiral now this is this is again your your very um very loose because you've got so much space you could actually do a triple um you'd get another another one at least through there and it would hold we're going to go in there again and close and i'm going to put that down and again if you put it down you're going to pick it up and it's going to look odd because it goes and gone let me it kind of goes all over the place see how these all you've got to do is take the last one hold it tight and then twist it so that it's going clockwise and then you automatically get that spiral back so i'm going to do this on some smaller jump rings so you can see so you, that's how you do it that's how you get this spiral as you can see that's it's 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 not very spiral like and it's it's going to twist like that as soon as you let go um that's because these are so open so we'll go on to some smaller jump rings to pull these in and i'm going to pinch one of these to start off with always have 
um, something to hold them. So we're going to get our first two. One, two. Thank you very much. Hang on, let me grab these. These are slightly bigger. They'll be easier for you to see. There we go. That's better, isn't it? You can do these. You can make get the most gorgeous, fine um, spirals with this. You can most jump rings you can do two but if they are very tiny i don't think you can do it with a three mil you can do a single spiral but not a double it's just too tiny so i'm going to start off i'm going to pick two of those up and close it right bear with me so you can get and i don't know whether we've got any tom um the um jump ring openers which is a bit like it's a bit like a it's a bit like a, a a thimble only it's it's a ring with two slots in so you can put it in and twist put it in twist put it in and twist um i'm terrible for using my nails i always end up with um grooves in my nails and i'm also terrible for not being able to see where they open our jump rings are just they're beautifully um laser cut and they they are so precise that it's sometimes hard to see exactly where um the cut is so, oh, we got some more jump rings on, some seven mil. Wow, that's good. 50, 50 of your seven mil in a diameter. Um, these, are, these are brilliant for, they make a fantastic spiral. The five mil and the four mil, you can do a graduated spiral with the seven, five and four. Looks amazing. And all you do is swap over to the next size down and it will just graduate so beautifully. So that'll be enough to be able to see where we're spiraling. So this is why we've got, we can hold it now. We've got, um, we're back to having a nice uh, firm hold. Pop our next two in and I am going to close these. I do the bigger ones easily with my fingers, but I shouldn't. I, I, uh, that's why I've got rubbish nails between this and wire work. Let's shut that. There we go. We're going to pop down. So again, so as I pick that up, that went that way. I want that to twist so that they both turn in the same direction. Like I say, it doesn't matter whether you do a clockwise spiral or an anti-clockwise spiral. Um, it, it doesn't matter. So we're going to pick up the next one and go through the four of them. So from now on, you're going through four jump rings. So we're going to pick that up and close it. Pick that up, feed through the middle. Now you can see with these, it's getting a lot tighter to find that little eye to put your jump rings through. So you're getting to the limit that you can go through. You wouldn't be able to do this as a triple. You would with those huge jump rings. Okay, so we're now going to turn that we're always going through four, so there's our next four. Pop that through there, shut it. Be careful when you're putting these in that you're not going through, that you're not going through this jump ring as well. So pull it one way or the other, it doesn't matter. But what you don't want to do is actually include that in it. So be careful. See how that's now loose. If I hold it like that, there you go. You can see that one's hanging loose. You don't want to catch it through there as well. So just a, just something to be aware of when you're doing it. Let it drop, twist it, right? We don't, don't want those top ones now. We just want these last two. So you can see how tight it's now becoming. This is where you get, you get something that looks like um, something Lewis Hamilton would be wearing. Um, a really thick, beautiful rope. It looks sumptuous. If you've got the sterling silver jump rings, it's going to look incredible. I've done loads of these in sterling and they're stunning, right? So we've got those two and those two, the last two in there. We're going to close that jump ring off, move it out of the way. See this tiny little gap we're going to go through is big enough for this. We're going to pop that into there. There we go. And again, you can check so you can see two and two. Nice and easy. 
close it off, hold it down. So if I put this down, can you see how this is sort of spiraling this way? So as you go around two, 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 they're coming forward. That's because they're all twisted that way. If I twisted that that way and then put my jump rings in, it, it looks discordant. It looks wrong. It's not smooth. So you can always see where you've gone wrong because this should follow, um, follow on. I'll do another few so you can see that in action. This is a great weighty, uh, great way to do a weighty chain for some of our larger pendants. Some of the uh, jadeite pendants would look great on this. Um, if you've got anything that's chunkier, even if you just want to, to uh, leave it as it is, we've had some amazing um, pendants that are in, in, in already got a bail on. Big cabochons look great with this rope. It, because it's substantial, because it looks, it, and, and is, extremely strong is it, it because you're going through one link one one jump ring is going through four others but you've got two going through four others it is so immensely strong doing it double um that it's fabulous so we're going to go through th those two and those two make sure you pick up all four and shut that one twist it can you see how they're all following around and you naturally twist it, but you can leave that one out of the way while you put the next one in. There we go. So when you're using when you're using your pliers, um, I have a habit of using two flat ones. You can use um, bent nose pliers. You can use flat nose pliers. Um, you tend to want to have a straight end. I was just looking to see if they've got any bent nose. I have got a pair of bent nose. Um, and put them around it's it's personal preference a lot of chain mailers like the bent nose pliers i've i've come from wire work and i've never i can use them but i'm more comfier these these are my bread and butter these are these are what i use every day so i'll i'll just add this one on and you'll see how this spiral is building okay It, it can build up um it can build up really quickly it's also something like this which isn't a massively complicated weave can you see how that that spiral is growing there that is going to look amazing it really will be amazing and and it, it grows pretty quickly your bazantine you can do in a few hours this you can do in a few hours it it, it builds really quickly now let me just grab my other pliers sorry oh we got some messages Oh, <laughs> okay. So, so Leanne um, is making me a, 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 a calen, a, uh, what's it called? Candle, candle, a cinnamon flavored candle in the shape of a dog. Um, hopefully my sister-in-law's not watching because it's for her. Oh, thank you. Who was that? Sorry, Linda. Brenda, Brenda, brilliant. Sending, she said um, that she's always struggled doing chain mail, but she's really um, found the demo was helpful. Please, please, please send in any chain mail you do to the Wall of Fame. Um, you can find me on Facebook if you want to see the, the sizes and numbers of jump rings you can read. I'm JM guest designer, Alison Tarry. Um, and you can, you, can, you can find me on there. Um, I'm not very good at putting links. <laughs> But if you message me, I will eventually get back to you. If I haven't, nudge me, because sometimes I, I don't notice. So, <laughs> well, John and I share, share tablets, so, so they pop up on both. So if he's accidentally looked at it, I won't know it's there. <laughs> so please forgive me if I've, I've not, I'm not ignoring you. I've just not necessarily seen it. So there's the... There's the jump ring. So you, the, the idea with, with a bent nose um, pliers, however bent they are, is you've got a fine piece if you need to get in somewhere fine, but you've got the bent piece. So that you've got a tiny little bit. It's not good for opening. But when you go over the bend, you cover quite a lot of a jump ring. So a lot of people um, really love the fact that you're um, adding in. Like I say, I, I'm not as quick 
because because I, I actually started jewelry jewelry making um, before um, many years ago um, with chainmail. I did a lot of chainmail and I found it. I loved it, but I found it very restrictive at the time so i was well i have to do this and then i have to do that and i have to put it together with this um and i learned over time and then i came back to it which i love it so i learned over time that don't ever let anybody put you in a box don't let anybody tell you this is the way you have to do it if you want to do byzantine with huge great big jump rings you do it if you want to do it like this and um you know pop a gemstone in the middle if you want that as a chain, you do it. It's personal. Nobody can tell you it's wrong. They can tell you it's not the traditional way to do something, but they cannot tell you it's wrong. Don't ever say, oh, you let anybody. The only time I, I listen to right and wrong, shall we say, is if I'm doing something with a torch or, or something that can be um, dangerous. If it's a health and safety thing, then obviously there's a right and wrong. Um, but I've I've done things and had people who were experienced say, but you can't do that. You don't do it like that. It won't work. And it, it does. I've done it and it worked and I've had proof of concept. Um, I've had people tell me that you can't do um, chain linking, uh, rosary linking with um, 0.25. Done it. Sat, it sat, sat on a screen and tried to pull it apart and, and made my fingers go white because it, it, it is strong enough. If you do it, if you do it, small you can do it so that's how i do the chains and you can now really see that spiral happening and even when you put it down you're still going to see that spiral so once that's built up into into a bracelet or whatever this would look amazing again if you popped that clasp on the end of there that's going to look amazing so both of these will work with your with your um element from from number three now we have, because he's, he's, he's really good, Tom has just fetched in the um, sizes. So this is what jump rings you'll need to do your two different um, sizes of bracelets. Um, thank you very much, Tom. So if you want to get the, the pack we had on earlier, then do this. You can do it with more of one, less of one. You can mix and match. What you'll find is, like with the two we did here with the gold and the silver, I'm just going to leave that there for a minute. So with the gold and the silver we did, there we go, pulling it through. Okay, so, so with the two different sizes, you're going to have a slight difference in size on your wrist. So, so bear that in mind, measure them. It might be that for, to fit your wrist, you don't have the end two um, Mobius rings on yours. You know, it's it's what fits what fits for you. You might need to put another element in. You might need to take an element off. Everybody's different. If you're selling, I would suggest you take one of those off and then add an extender. Because this clasp will work so well with an extender, then I would go that way. Then then it can fit to someone's wrist because it's very some it's very hard for someone to buy something and go home and it not fit, or take some elements made up with you and, and, and alter it there for them and say try it on they go oh no it doesn't fit say that's fine if you'd like to buy it I can then alter it for you but be very careful voice of experience been caught out like that before they have to pay for it before you alter it because people will say oh yes I'll call back later and and they forget they get distracted so either take a deposit or take the money for it and say, no, that's fine. I can change that for you. I can add that in. Um, and if you come back in 10 minutes, or, or you can stand there and watch me do it, a proof that I'm doing it. I haven't got, you know, there's no, there's no one under the table who's doing it for me. I'm not just going to hand it down there. I, I can do it for you. You can watch the process and actually see how, how I'm going to extend it. So don't forget, if you're selling it and you're going to alter it, please, please take some money. Take a commitment from them that take a commitment from them that they are going to buy it. Um, I'm not saying everybody's going to walk off. I'm not going to say everyone's going to forget. However, a lot of people do. So, so cover yourselves. Have, are you coming, are you coming back with some more? Have you got, 
This deal, this deal, I agree with Tom, is so crazy. This is a proper Christmas closed jump ring. This is a proper, a proper. So these are your twist, these are your closed ones. So you can mix these in. You can actually um, cut a closed one if you want um, and open it. Don't open and close it a lot if you have, because at some point they've got a solder point. So if you don't cut it on the solder point, every time you open and close it, you're stressing it. But you can open a closed jump ring by cutting it. Um, and they're just fabulous. Just use them in all your jewelry. The textured ones are brilliant. So put your textured ones in and mix them up. Mix them up with your chain mail. Fantastic. So I look forward to seeing all your bracelets in both varieties on send them into the wall of fame at studio at jewelrymaker.com um, check out the website to see if you want to add any gemstones to this to to, to to add any to have a look what other jump rings are there on www.jewelrymaker.com and have fun with your chain mail happy christmas <laughs>